Charlie. La 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 la. Don we know our gay apparel. La 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 la. Troll the ancient Yuletide carol. La 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 la. Oh my goodness, the persistence of Cousin It. Oh, but here we are. Yes, I know. I'm running late. Yes, and I'm getting scolded by him. I am being told that he has been waiting far, far too long to wish everybody very, very happy holidays. And he's right. I haven't featured him for a while. And yet here he is in bloom. He hasn't exactly established his full spectacle. But maybe it's because I haven't been putting the viewfinder on him. So on behalf of Cousin It, myself, my daughter, King, Balu, and Siliano, everybody, I wish you a very, very happy holiday season. Please, please make sure that you stay safe. And I hope that you enjoy this episode of Blooms for you. And please let Cousin It know that he is looking amazing. He has even tried to give me a hint of his fragrance for the first time. I guess he's putting on a little bit of that old splash, you know, trying to make himself more attractive to me, drawing more and more of my attention to him, seeing as it's been a long, long time. Needless to say, a very, very special, dedicated, happy holidays, specifically from Cousin It. Now I'm being told he doesn't want to be in the whole gaggle list of everybody else. So let me get more specific. An exclusive season's greeting from Cousin It to everybody that is watching this video, be it during the holiday season and if many, many months later, just know that all the blooms on Cousin Knit are dedicated to everybody that watches this video. If you've never commented before, please let me know that you're watching, leave me a comment and I will put you on a list that I have got running so that eventually one of the blooms of my orchids will be dedicated to you personally as a thank you for supporting my channel. Meanwhile, he still has a lot, a lot of buds to go. And it was very difficult for me to put his glasses on today because yeah, yeah I ruined one bloom while I was trying to make them sit straight, but he's looking marvelous. I love these little blooms. They look like little fireworks, which brings me to New Year's Eve. It's all part and parcel of the charm of my Maxillaria variabilis. If I didn't mention that, Cousin It is a Maxillaria variabilis. And he has plenty more to come. So anybody that has missed Cousin It and Cousin It who's grumpy because he hasn't been in the viewfinder now that he's finally in bloom, there will be plenty more of him around because this is going to go on probably until the end of February if nothing goes wrong. Anyway, let's go and have a look, see what has opened recently. There are some blooms that are now not in bloom anymore, but the beauty of this series is I can take clips when I get the blooms in their prime and dedicate them and then compile another episode of Blooms for You. So let's go and have a look, see at whose name came up this time around. Let's see if this works. This is a bit precarious. This is a newcomer in my collection. There's only one person I can think of that I want to dedicate this orchid to at this point in time for the support on my channel, and that is Tokyo World Mark. Tokyo World Mark gave me this orchid together with Akeren orchids, and I have to say the whole box that came was just incredible. What an unboxing that was. This Tulumnia pomegranate was in that box, and look at it, it is now blooming for Tokyo World Mark. So thank you so much, Tokyo World Mark, for your support, for being so generous. If you speak to Akeren Orchids again, please let them know that I'm ever, ever so grateful. And the big Tulumnia that I got in that box is blooming. You see, my collection I thought was blooming yellows, oranges, and all that which are pretty, which are nice, but if you have as many tulumnias as I have, and you've got all these yellowy, orangey colors coming out, I really wanted something deep and dark and striking. And this pomegranate is just the ticket. A beautiful, beautiful spike that I've been cultivating ever, ever so carefully, just to make sure I don't break it. I've been dying to see these blooms and so looking forward to being able to dedicate them to you, Mark. 
Aren't they gorgeous? Maybe you've seen them before. I have not, but they are definitely, definitely right up my street. The blooms are huge as well in comparison to normal Tolumnia blooms. Big, big petals. Amazing, amazing, I love it. Thank you, Tokyo World Mark. Really, really appreciate it. So glad that this spike made it. And I wish it would stay in focus, but the pot is not stable. As you can see, I've still got it in the basket. I'm waiting for the right opportunity to pot it up. But this is a beautiful surprise spike, and I'm so happy. Thank you once again, Tokyo World. Mark, extend those thanks to a Karen Orchids, please. Your support has been priceless. There she is, <laughs> all the way down there, the 10th bloom. I have to somehow figure out a Tetris configuration so that this sequential blooming spike of my Sologeny Lime Bay can actually be filmed when the 10th bloom is now out to dedicate to Kathleen Ross. So just wanted to show you how long the spike has gotten. Now I'm going to reposition the camera and let's have a closer look. Kathleen Ross at your bloom from my Sologeny Lime Bay to say thank you properly to you for supporting me here on my channel. It is not the most elegant of displays. I am so sorry. And it's also a little bit blustery today, but because of how she presents herself in the breeze, bopping around, well, not that much. Come on, let that breeze back off a little bit. Put it back to elegant mode. But I do love the movement that she has because similar to what you see here now, I have her moving around in the grow space where I have her over the winter. And it just adds to a little bit of charm while she's doing her thing. 10th bloom, 11th bud is still looking good. There is a little concern this time of year that maybe, maybe things are starting to peter out and we might not get to 11th bloom. But needless to say, the 10th bloom is looking amazing. In the beginning, I thought, well, we're going to get a little bit of a smaller bloom. That can happen. That is the norm. As the spike gets longer and longer, the blooms get a little bit smaller. But no, nope. it took her a few more days to come through and develop her proper size. She has no fragrance this time of year, though. So the dusty room, the musty fragrance, that is gone. But other than that, her colors are impeccable. I can never get tired of the structure of this bloom. So impressive. That lip with its chocolate color. I just can't get over it. Even here, the markings. So I'm really glad this is a sequential bloomer because I get a lot, a lot of time out of her. This year in 2021, I only managed one spike. She started everything a little bit later. This time last year, I was already showcasing the 14th bloom and I had a second spike going. But you know what? I am not complaining. Any orchid that comes into bloom for me is super welcome. So Kathleen Ross, my 10th bloom of Sologeny Lime Bay, she blooms for you to say thank you so very, very much to you for your support here on my channel and know that you are very, very much appreciated. I hope that all your preparations for the holidays are going according to plan. There's no last minute issues and that you can just peacefully, as the season requires or suggests, peacefully glide into Christmas and New Year and come out in 2022 safely. Really, really appreciate you, Kathleen Ross. Thank you so very, very much. My 10th bloom, Sologeny Lime Bay, she blooms for you. Not quite in full bloom, but I've already lost a bloom. I was waiting for a little bud to open in the back here. And well, you know what? I'm not gonna wait any longer. There's that one little bud. I thought the cooler temperatures would 
extend the blooming a little bit, but you know what? I'm going back to my normal way of filming. Don't wait for the blooms to open fully because others may fade. But Katlia Cernua, I want to say thank you so very, very much to Nutella, Peter Ashby Saracen, Tara, Miljet's channel, Team Bazaya, Anna's Life Adventures, Paris Amma's Kitchen, and R for your support here on my channel. Now, Nutella, I love that stuff, but Nutella is the translation I got from Google Translate Language Detector because your name is in Arabic. So I am hoping I'm doing you justice by using the name Nutella because I'm sorry, I cannot read Arabic. That's what I got from the language detector out of Google Nutella, and that is what I'm going to use for the dedication of my Catlia Cernua blooms to say thank you so much for being here on my channel, for having subscribed, for having commented. So I'm just going to read that list again because it is pretty extensive. Nutella, Peter Ashby Saracen, Tara, Mildred's channel, Team Bazaya, Anna's Life Adventures, Paris, Amma's Kitchen, and the letter R. My little Catlia Cernua sparkles in the winter sunshine of southern Spain to just say thank you so very, very much for supporting me here on Ninja Orchids. Early days, any channel needs all the help they can get. And for you to be here and go through the whole process of all the little hiccups, the headaches, me trying to figure things out, you're still here? I want to say a massive, massive thank you and a load of appreciation on my part. So we did a care collab on the Cat Leah Cernuak recently, and I didn't actually have her in my line of vision for the notes on the list of dedications. It was so nice to see that I actually got 19 blooms. Now it's only 18, but it gave me an opportunity to get into that list and get to more people sooner than what I had expected. So I'm also very grateful for the blooms on my cat Lea Cernua. She's absolutely adorable. And you know what? I did have her mounted in the past and the nodding orchid effect came because of how the blooms drooped a little bit and you had to see them from below, which is not difficult when an orchid is mounted. But having her in a pot, the nodding orchid effect doesn't kick in and she just presents herself quite beautifully in this setup. I'm absolutely loving, loving the setup and I am so glad that she made it. You see here, nodding, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now on a mount, that would be all of them. But in this case, they have to kind of reach up for the sun and they're doing it so, so adorably well. Right, that is my cat Lea Cernua to say thank you to Nutella, Peter Ashby Saracen, Tara, Mildred's channel, Team Bazaya, Anna's Life Adventures, Paris Amma's Kitchen and R for supporting me here on my channel and I hope that you all are doing well in your part of the world. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, I think we'll be okay. It wasn't that sunny of a day and I thought I could get a nice little background contrast for my Brassavola Cordata here to dedicate this spike to Jennifer Soros and Simone Williams Richardson. And here comes the sun. Nah, not so bad. I think we can still appreciate how gorgeous these blooms are. And this is my second spike of 2021. Four blooms, surprise, very happy. And even though it looks a little bit wonky, there's a method to my madness here. The spike is facing towards the light source so that I don't have it going the opposite way because can you imagine this spike all the way over here. It is winter, she lives inside for now, so space, yes, is a criteria, and it has worked, and I think she looks absolutely marvelous, and I'm so pleased that I can dedicate these gorgeous blooms to Jennifer Soros and Simone Williams Richardson, or maybe Simone Williams Richardson, so if there was just a quick switch of the focus there, I just saw what I saw in the viewfinder and I thought, wow, they look gorgeous. 
against the somewhat washed out black background and I just stopped my recording and took a picture. Yeah, I love this look. You can see the delicate textures of the lip. It has sort of a tissue effect. The crinkling. This is not because they're old. These blooms are a week old, but this is how the texture of the lip presents itself. And I just love the fact it adds that little extra bit of detail. Otherwise, the bloom itself is not, let's say, remarkable, but it has such a beautiful, elegant existence. It just looks so whimsical, like something out of fairyland. Personally, I love it. I love the cream colored. I love the delicate texture. And I do love how the lip itself is more like an open lotus, one lotus petal, so to speak. And at this point in time, she is not as fragrant as she was early in the season when the temperatures were a lot warmer. I'm getting a little bit of a fragrance, that beautiful, elegant waft of citrus and powdery cream, something along those lines. It really is quite quite divine, if I may say so myself. There is a richness about it, but it's not overbearing, nor is it overpowering. It is a fragrance I have to get close to the blooms to be able to appreciate. It's not something that fills the room, but oh my, it would make a wonderful perfume if somebody were to bottle this. So that is my Brassavola Cordata Spike dedicated to Jennifer Soros and Simone Williams Richardson to say thank you to the two of you so very much for your support here on my channel. Know that you are appreciated and know that my cordata here, she blooms for you. Thank you, both of you. We're still here. I feel like he needs a little bit of some Christmas baubles. <laughs> I am not putting out any Christmas decorations. Siliano is too much of a liability. But yes, he's still here. No tinsel, no nothing. But his blooms speak for themselves and they decorate him beautifully. Thank you so very, very much for watching. Once again, holiday greetings, holiday wishes, everything, peace, calm and joy. And above all, health. Have yourselves a beautiful, beautiful day. And speaking of health, on one condition, please, that you stay safe and take care. Bye.